day, good day, dear friends. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Man, it's been a while. Made a transition from Las Vegas, as you know, here in beautiful sunny Florida, where today it's about 64 degrees. Absolutely beautiful and uh, pristine outside. My friends, I have not been vlogging um, as often as I should. I have not abandoned the uh, community and I hope you have not abandoned me either. <laughs> However, let me just give you a little uh, update as to why um, I have slowed to um, the posting on a, on a regular basis. After uh, coming here to uh, moving here to Florida, uh, the idea was to um, was to uh, start a new um, start a new job. Um, of course, I am still receiving a paycheck until a day or so ago. So I've decided to uh, channel my energy into um, uh, becoming a uh, real estate um, licensed uh, or licensed real estate agent uh, here in Florida. Um, you know, when I was growing up as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> it must be in the country, I'm not sure. Uh, didn't hear it much in the city. But the word goes like this, and maybe you can fill them in. Um, I've never taught this to any of my, uh, any of my kids. But, um, you know, it used to go like this. Uh, and I say it in, uh, in Patois, at least I'll try. <laughs> if you want good, you know, Zappi Ron. Huh. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> Do I have to catch a cold? <laughs> but um, thinking uh, of how um, old folks um, speak during those times, um, it appears as if they all speak in code. But I think um, uh, what it really meant is that if you want something, you have to be determined to get it. You have to work hard to get it, and they, um, uh, I am not sure uh, where the where the running nodes come in, but uh, <laughs> I would imagine it's like climbing a hill um, in the uh, very um, uh, uh, treacherous uh, weather. Um, doesn't matter what, you're not going to stop. You're going to keep on going. That's the only way I can translate it. But uh, in any event, my friends, um, I stuck to my um, to my books. Um, uh, four week study. Uh, first, let me just back up a little bit. Uh, when I first got here, um, got here uh, December twenty uh, second. Um, the next business day was um, December twenty sixth. I went out, I got my uh, digital fingerprint as required by the um, uh, Department of um, Business and Professional Regulation here in Florida, uh, known as uh, DBPR. Um, got the fingerprint, I applied for my, uh, for my license, um, because that's the way it works. It's kind of backward, you have to apply for the license, <laughs> even before you start the course. So I applied for, uh, applied for the license, I went through and did my... Um, uh, did my uh, study for the uh, principle and practice um, of law and the um, of real estate law, and they um, uh, spend uh, much of my time doing so day and night. Um, I believe in one take. <laughs> you only get you only get to impress someone once. <laughs> the second time around, they probably won't believe you. <laughs> So I went for the one take. By spending uh, a lot of time um, uh, studying um, uh, with tips from friends, which I really appreciate, um, that's how to approach it. And they um, went ahead and I can tell you, I have passed my Florida real estate license exam. And one is now one of the newest um, real estate associate here in Florida. 
Uh, eventually, I'll get into uh, joining the organization that I can use uh, the term. Uh, the term I cannot use other term. First of all, you must know Florida real estate law, um, uh, real estate um, practice is very strict. Um, uh, you can get fined, really, uh, in in many many ways for not following. Um, you know, for not taking due care in what you're doing. Uh, I'm very mindful, but I'm also very organized in, in the things I do um, and believe in, uh, in operating in the highest integrity. And so that fell right within my bounds. Um, so <laughs> there's a lot to learn, you know, coming to a new state, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, just a lot to learn. But um, like I said, I, I, I stuck to, um, I, I get my nose down and I, um, <laughs> I did what I had to do. And um, yes, I, uh, I uh, became the, uh, the newest um, uh, real estate uh, license associate. So here I am, my friends. But today, <clears throat> I'm gonna cook a little bit. I went ahead and did some uh, advanced preparation. I'm making oxtail, um, some roast chicken. Um, so let me show you what I'm doing here. Let me get the oxtail in the bowl. So, okay, let's do this. So, the oxtail already, um, this is pre-seasoned. It's been marinated um, now for almost about a week. It's going to be pan braised. It's gonna be pan braised, and let me just show you a little bit of. Uh, uh, let's see what we got here. And yes, I did use my oxtail seasoning, <laughs> and the chicken itself. Let's see what I'm gonna do with the chicken. The chicken is already uh, marinated as well. Let me walk away for a second. It should be good to go. I'll tell you a funny story though. Uh, the, the story behind having it mar being marinated for, for the length of time that it has um, was not pre-planned. Um, January 24th was my uh, daughter's um, uh, birthday. Um, that an unfortunate incident occur. Um, so we had to postpone it. So everything went back in the freezer. Uh, January 24, that's quite a while. <laughs> everything went back in the freezer. Um, uh, second week, um, so everything went back in the freezer, but I took them out about a week ago um, so they could slowly thaw and uh, have the marinade uh, set in. So the uh, chicken is your just regular seasoned, but I think um, I'm gonna slop some some uh, dirt seasoning in this sucker. I just thought about that. <laughs> so I'm going to reach into, into my cabinet here And guess what, man? <laughs> Me got some Jamaican jerk. So, let's open the sucker. Pure gloves. Let's put some gloves on, and we're gonna slabber this thing on. All right. We're gonna be very generous with this sucker. Let's 
I shouldn't be talking about calling my food sucker. <laughs> oh, let's get some on the back here. I have plenty of this. I may use it all up. Somebody will be crying today, but it's going to be tear tears of joy. Take care of that. Slot this under. I'll be held to have another pair of gloves on. Another set of gloves. That's okay. All right. So, my friends, here we go. Looks a little messy, but I'm gonna clean it up, clean it up before getting in the oven. And so, here we go. We have the chicken ready to go, and for the second second dish or third rather, we're gonna do a little bit of a. Uh, This is a um, Brussels sprout, a lot of pre-seasoned, just with uh, just a touch of uh, red wine vinegar, a little Cajun seasoning, pepper, and uh, olive oil. Uh, this one will, oh, let's see, uh, perhaps I should use a bigger Let's use a bigger skillet. So it's better. <clears throat> so this one will have um, after it's uh, oven roast. Um, there will be in a little bit. I'm gonna pop this in my um, in my fryer. Center cut uh, bacon, uh, generous, some generous strip. Um, granted, my friends, I don't need like this all the time, but I know my uh, daughter and granddaughter would love this. So, um, uh, <laughs> and making uh, uh, what they like. Um, so anyway, so in a little bit, this I'll pop this in my fryer, um, have it uh, nice and crispy. And the, uh, then I'm gonna glaze it uh, with some um, uh, some uh, some honey, uh, chop it up, and then toss it in with uh, some grated parmesan. That'll be that'll be the uh, the side dish um, for today. In addition to that, I've already prepared. As a matter of fact, let me turn the oven on. All right, let's get that sucker going. And 350 is good. And then in addition to that, I am making, <laughs> I am making rice and peas. And it's really peas, my friend, not beans. So here I have some gungu peas, or pigeon peas as you may know it. Um, 
I'm gonna wash this and start cooking it. Uh, it's already uh, pre-soaked, so cook the cooking process should be very fast. And then from there, I will walk you through the step as to what I'm gonna do to make this delicious dish. <laughs> uh, I am so glad you could join me, and I'm so glad to be back with you. So my friends, the, uh, it's now time to braise the oxtail. And I think what I'm going to do to speed up the uh, process after, first I'm going to brown it. And after the initial browning, um, I'm going to speed up the process by um, putting it in the uh, pressure cooker. And after um, pressure cooking it, um, uh, medium, I would say, midway, um, just to get it tender enough. Then I'll actually cook it down um, uh, with all the uh, added ingredients, uh, carrots, uh, tomato, etc. Um, so this is the first uh, first step, is the uh, browning part of it, just to seal the flavor in. Okay. I'm going to allow the oil to uh, heat up. It wasn't hot enough, but it doesn't matter. I'll crank it up so it's on high. I have not had meat in ages, so today I will have a little bit. <laughs> okay, my friends, so this is now nice and brown, as you can see. I'm going to transfer that into my pressure cooker. Okay, so I will not stand here all day. <laughs> I will give my uh, my uh, self a chance to enjoy a glass of uh, glass of wine. So I'm racing for wine. <laughs> All right, so that's nice and brown. Flavors are sealed in. Now, I'm going to add to the pot
some beef broth, unsalted. Kind of get that uh, flavor. Demi. This is where all the uh, seasoning gather here. We'll put a little bit more in there. So when it goes in the pressure cooker, it's nice and hot. Let's crank it up. Uh, maybe just a little bit more. You want to make it so, my friends. While the uh, pressure cooker is uh, kicking up in the background, I'm going to go ahead and prepare these um, uh, the vegetables that I'm adding to to the um, to the oxtail. So my friends, I didn't finish telling this story about um, about my uh, me obtaining my um, real estate license. This is the second go around for me. Um, Twenty years ago, when I was living in uh, New Jersey, I had a real estate license, which uh, lasts for about ten years. So I have a ten-year practice of uh, real estate in uh, New Jersey. So I cannot say it was uh, second nature to come here in Florida and actually get one. I must tell you that a lot of things in my life is all about belief. And yes, I do believe in God. And yes, there was a lot of prayers. And my friends, it so happened that I found an employing broker. And that happens in the middle of my course. I got a phone call uh, thinking it was a referral from a former realtor, or, or not a former realtor, but a realtor uh, of mine from um, uh, Las Vegas. But it so happened that um, my name was picked up, I would imagine, from the uh, database as a, as a real estate um, uh, a student. Anyway, got a call, had a conversation, and uh, uh, the culture of this office really, really makes me um, uh, excited and motivated me uh, to, uh, to complete the task of <laughs> passing my examination. Uh, there was a letter of prayers. And there's nothing, nothing, nothing beats believing. And knowing that God is always there. And so that is the rest of my story uh, with getting my uh, real estate license. So yes, I have an employing broker and I'm ready to go. I just want to share it with you. <laughs> So my friends, now, now that the uh, peas, uh, let's see if we can bring this over here for you. The peas completely cooked. I am going to now add some scallion and thyme. Already uh, make the green onions and thyme. So here, what I'm going to do here, pulverize this a little bit.
get it in the pot. Turn this portion of time. Uh, let's put a little bit more. A few more sprigs. And then I have pre prep I have pre-prepped coconut milk. So I'm going to add my coconut milk. And from what I gather here, this will probably need some more water. And I'm going to wash my rice. But I'm not going to add water. I'm going to add a chicken broth. So my friends, I've seasoned my um, rice and peas with a little bit of um, uh, Creole seasoning, uh, pepper, and a little bit of a little bit of um, this is for flavor basically it's uh, no salt uh, seasoning uh, along with the uh, thyme and scallion and they uh, give it an absolute perfect flavor so so that's what went into my rice and peas. So now I'm going to wash and add the rice and slowly simmer this baby. <laughs> so my friends, <laughs> all right, the pressure cooker did, it do did its job and now it's time to return the meat back to the original pot. This is going to be nice and tender. It was done, uh, uh, it was done in the pressure cooker for about um, uh, 20, 20 minutes or so. And uh, I think it turns out perfect. So now, At this stage, I'll be adding my tomato, onions and carrots and finish this off. For a little bit of insurance, I'm going to add, I may not need it, but I'll add it anyway, just to give it a little bit of kick. But first I will taste to make sure that uh, it's not too salty. This already have the flavor, the uh, desired flavor that I wanted in terms of um, the amount of salt. So let's give this a try. Nice and spicy. A little bit salty. So I'm only going to add a small pot. Oops, that's it right there. And uh, if need be, I'll add some more broth.
And I'm going to cook this slowly. Okay, let's turn that down to low. Because believe it or not, the meat is already cooked. So all I'm doing here is balancing off the rest of the flavor. Let's add a little bit of beef broth to that. This is unsalted, so I don't have to worry about the amount of salt. Oh, it's going to be good. Just taste them a little bit here. Oh, it's going to be good. So, my friends, the air fryer did its job. Bacon is nice and crispy. I'm going to wait for them to cool. And after cooling, I'll do my uh, honey glaze and then I'll chop them up. By then, the uh, Brussels sprout should be ready. As a matter of fact, it's probably ready by now. Let's take a look. Yes, it's ready. <laughs> All right, set it aside. Oh, this should be ready to go. Let's get some honey. That should be enough. It's a slight glaze. Alright, that should be enough. Chop this sucker up. So my friends, while it's still hot, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of uh, Parmesan cheese. Let's get this over. I cheated. I already bought the uh, bought the uh, grated, ready grated parm. Just sprinkle with parm. 
Uh, be generous. What the heck? You only live once. But if you eat too much, <laughs> it'll take you early. <laughs> hands are in it, but my hands are clean. I'm gonna work that in a little bit. See, my friends, I don't do this very often. This is a once in a blue moon. <laughs> and today is the blue moon. <laughs> so, this is ready to go. Delicious Brussels sprout with honey glazed bacon and uh, Parmesan cheese. <laughs> so, my friends, I'm another dish to go. Oh, speaking of which, you know, um, every time I uh, attempt to make uh, something Jamaican, I have to tell a Jamaican story. And maybe um, uh, some of my uh, Jamaican subscribers can um, uh, chime in <laughs> in the comment section. This is one word I always uh, I've heard when I was growing up as a kid. Um, uh, of course, um, those words were left behind um, by the time I was uh, 15 years old. I have not heard them anymore, and I guess because of a change of environment. But um, what the heck does it mean? And I'll say it in uh, Patois the best way I can. <laughs> It takes seven years to wash pickle up in the hand back. What? Huh. Over the years, um, I've been thinking, <laughs> looking back at those, uh, at those words. Uh, you know, I have time to think. Um, of course, your childhood memory is probably one of the best memories you can ever have. And so, <laughs> you sort of recall and said, what the heck? What are they talking about then? But anyway, I surmise that uh, I kind of uh, translated to mean uh, curse. If you're curse, it lasts for seven years. So there you have it. <laughs> so now back to my um, back to my muffins. I'm gonna make a, uh, actually I'm making cornbread today. Uh, this cornbread I already have the two pack of mix in here. I'm gonna do a little bit of um, sour cream in this mix. It's a generous portion of salt. I'm not going to measure anything. I'm just going to throw them in and uh, mix to a certain consistency. And then I'm going to add, uh, let's get some olive oil. I'm going to add some olive oil to the mix. I'll be generous as well. And I'm going to add some cream. The milk, rather. Okay, and I'll add more milk as needed. I'm going to add, like I said, this is done once in a blue moon. So today I'm going to go out on a limb and uh, do something I normally wouldn't. So I'm going to add a little bit of sugar. That should do it. And let's start this up. Yep. So 
So this is supposed to be a, a mushy, a mushy cornbread, or a moist cornbread for that matter. And then I'm gonna add. Let's get the scissors and cut this. Some uh, corn kernel. clean mess. Oh, maybe I should shape it up a little bit. A clean mess, okay. There's such thing as a clean mess. Uh, cut a little bit more off. Then I'm going to, just for pliability, a little bit of uh, avocado oil spray so it peels easily. Uh, let's give it a little more. I'm going to add a little more cream in here. Okay, so I want to make it as mushy as possible. This is good to go. The oven is ready. So I'm going to pop it in. All right, in the oven we go. So my friends, everything is ready. Chicken may look a little bit charred, but that is the uh, uh, jerk um, seasoning. Look at that delicious looking oxtail. Braise. Pan braise. Rice and peas ready. And so is the um, Brussels sprout with the uh, glazed uh, uh, honey bacon and the uh, parmesan cheese. Now there's still one more. Sorry about that. There's still one more um, item uh, that is yet to be completed. And that is, or it is completed. And here we come.
exactly. <laughs> um, so, my friends, this was done overnight. And uh, this is a Jamaican style, uh, which I will replay. Jamaican style macaroni salad. And basically what's in here is a um, uh, finely uh, cubed um, carrots, uh, celery, um, uh, tricolor uh, peppers, bell peppers, and the um, um, mayonnaise, a little bit of um, apple cider um, vinegar, and the, uh, some uh, condensed milk, sweetened condensed milk. Um, so this is a delicious dish, ready, ready, ready to go. And in addition to that, I have prepared overnight just to make things a little bit easier. This is my um, cabbage and carrot salad, famous in Jamaica. Um, let me uh, put everything in a bowl, in a large bowl. So I'm going to combine everything here. This is a lot, by the way. <laughs> it's only a few of us for dinner. <laughs> Um, but uh, it will still always be, uh, can always be left over. Okay, so I'm going to toss everything in. And what I have here is a little bit of um, sugar with uh, just regular white vinegar. That's it. It's very simple dressing. First, I'm gonna toss it in. Let's get a couple of spoons. I try not to make any noise, too much noise in your ears. These are all done by hands, by the way, no machine. So in the interest of time, I did it overnight. So I wouldn't be boring you with, so I'm just gonna pour this over. And that is the dressing. That's it. That's it, my friends. <laughs> One more to go. The cornbread's in the oven. And then we will wrap it up. <laughs> So my friends, at the end of the day, <laughs> cooking is complete. <laughs> I uh, have a small dish to share with you. Um, has a combination of uh, every little thing, piece of oxtail, a little bit of uh, Brussels sprout, a little bit of the uh, Jamaican uh, macaroni salad. Of course, the rice and peas and the uh, cornbread. So, <laughs> this is my appetizer plate. Before I dig in and before I take a sip, of course, you get the first sip. Cheers. And <laughs> here we go. Mamma mia. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. 
the oxtail falling off the bones. Delicious. Mama would be proud. God rest his soul. One day, they will be taste the vision. <laughs> Delicious. My friends. Live life every day as if it's your last. <laughs> Love yourself silly. That's what I do. <laughs> 64 years young. Still felt like 25. I'm not boasting. I just give thanks to the one above. So my friends, until next time, this is your Jamaican in Move saying one love. Peace. Love you, my friends. Thanks for hanging out with me. If you're uh, new to my channel, please don't forget to uh, like, share, of course, comment, and most important, subscribe. By the way, I have until July to uh, capture my uh, thousand um, subscribers and the uh, another 3,000 views to go, view hours that is. So keep on plugging in. Um, as of uh, today, there are more to come now that I'm free from my books. <laughs> and it will be a practicing uh, real estate associate. Um, I'll be in the move. My friends, love you. Peace. Take care.